Well, good morning. I'm Alistair McPhee, the Recruitment Training Officer at Kuhn Review Print Speaking to the Blind. Today I'm going to take you through how I go about putting together some of our Q Talks videos. That's the interviews that our Access to Audio Ambassador team leader Liz Bailey does with um, organisations or individuals who either support the work of Kuhn Review or in some way uh, are involved in visual impairment services or a charity that is of, of direct interest to our listeners. So the Q Talks interviews are currently being done on our Zoom account. Uh, they are roughly 15 minutes in length. And how we go about it is um, once the video has been saved within Zoom, um, we download that video and we make it available in Dropbox. So first of all, I will um, go into our Dropbox account. Right, so I've now found the video and I am going to hopefully now show you the Dropbox link. Here we go. So basically in the Zoom meetings folder, you've got the Edva Q Talks video. Uh, I'm now going to go back to something called Movie Maker which is this folder here uh, or this video here, video making package here. As you can see there, it's got the option to add video and photos. I should also say this is a classic movie maker. This is my personal preference. Uh, there are some upgrades that come with Windows 10 uh, and to be honest, I couldn't be bothered learning them. So um, add video and we go back to uh, Dropbox and we go to the AA files, we go to the Zoom meetings and we then find this week it was the EDVA team, Eastern Branch of Voluntary Action team. So as you see there, um, the video is beginning to load. It's then also saying Movie Maker is preparing your files and it's now loading the file in. As you can see there, this takes a wee bit of time, so we'll come back to you in just a few minutes. Right, so as you can see there, the file has now completed loading. And if I simply press the play button here, you'll see everybody coming in to the call. So you can hear Liz speaking at the moment. Um, now, the other thing here is that, as you can hopefully see there, there does, you can usually spot where their sound wave starts. So Liz has started the recording and started speaking relatively quickly after pressing record. Um, my preference uh, from an editing point of view is that she starts the record, waits a minute or so, and then, um, or waits about 30 seconds, say, uh, just to give me a bit of space to add in the introductions, etc. later on. Um, now, the next thing that I would be doing at this point is watching to find a bit where uh, Liz or one of the other team uh, smiles. And this is a good one for Liz. So I would now use the print screen button on my um, keyboard. We'll try that again. There we go. Right, so we now have the screenshot on the screen and I'm now going to use the crop button because I'm going to try and pinch a picture of Liz. These pictures are what I tend to use at the start of um, the final video. I'll import these videos into Ripple in a second, or these pictures rather, into Ripple in a second. Now, um, it was Liz I was going after first, so we will... Okay. So we then press um, save a copy. 
So that's this is now saved. Unfortunately, you basically got to go in each time and repeat the task. Now, because I spotted that, this is a good one as well. I'm going to do the same thing. Save a copy. Well, that just replaced it, didn't it? That was annoying. So we're now taking uh, another snapshot. And we'll go there. And we'll let Graham be, be serious, seeing he's in such a beautiful place. And I'll go back and take another one of Liz. The reason, by the way, you see three lots of images there is at home here, I've actually been able to set up three monitors, my laptop and two additional monitors. Um, I won't take a wee bit off Liz's head there. I have to admit, I quite like her um, lampshade and her um, use rack or whatever it is on the wall. Let's save. So that's me now got the three pictures that I'm going to be using. So my next task is to go on to Ripple. And funnily enough, I've already got Ripple open. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've got one particular video that I use all the time. Um, I think this one, is it? No, uh, I'll use one of the older ones. It. So this is me in Ripple, and I'll do a separate video about how to access Ripple. Now, you'll see here that we've actually loaded up uh, our own audio, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Now, one way to stop the noise is to actually start editing it. So, you will go here. So I've changed it to QTOX, Eastern Partnership Voluntary Action. I know we're not going to have enough room for both names, so I'm just leaving it like that. And I'm making sure that our sponsors or the supporters of this particular project get mentioned. And that's the um, RS McDonald Charitable Trust, the Impact Funding Partners and the Sutter Charitable Trust. Um, so that has now changed. And we now want to add this week's media. Now you see here that I've got a few pictures of Liz because obviously there's been a few interviews that she's done but I'm going to and then I've obviously got the sort of standard pictures that we've been using for the access to audio 
um, project. I'm going to leave them in. I'm going to take out Lindsay, who was um, being interviewed the other week. And I'm going to upload the images that we've got. Now, um, what I will do. And I'm looking for the ones that we did today. So that's today's three pictures. It'll take possibly a few minutes to upload. And although it's showing them as being low resolution, they're actually um, good enough for what we're doing. And for preference, I like to sort of put the, you know, the human picture in between the uh, pictures of the project. So now if we go back to the first slide and play it again. And you can see here it's that. So that particular one, Graham is a bit off. So you can actually take your mouse and scroll across. So there's Liz, there's the poster. So again, we'll do the same here. Once again, the poster, Graham. All right, so that covers that. So QTOX, Eastern Barnshire, Voluntary Action, and Media in terms of putting the audio in. Uh, you come down here to the audio and as you can see here there is actually a file that's already been put together Qtox outro Alistair version star dot eh, or dot mp3 and basically I used um, Audacity um, and some music that Ripple had um, so I mixed the music and an introduction together for my own purposes. So that is now all there. You can change the size of the um, ripple front, but that's again, I prefer using this one. Um, and that is it just now. So we then press next. For the purpose we're doing it today, I'm going to use the full HD. And then again, this will take a few minutes. So as you can see here, it is putting the Ripple advert together, recording it down. And uh, because it's being done online, it does take a wee bit of time. Um, so currently we're at 45% and I'll come back to you once it's 100%. So the file has now reached uh, its full capacity. Um, so we have a completed file and as you can see that's roughly 37 seconds in length. And the completed file now it's now got Graham. So here on the side I've I've got it set up for uh, some of the places on our social media, but I'll take them off just now because all I'm actually needing is for it to be saved to the computer. And I will share that now, meaning it will should now download to my computer.
So as you see here, we've now got the file downloaded, Ripple video, etc, etc. So I'm going to shut down Ripple. Shut down this as well. And what I now want to do is add in the uh, video we've just created. So add video. I suspect it's going to be in downloads. It is. That's it there. And open. Now, what I always find annoying here is the video tends to go to the end. Um, so I'm going to just copy it because I do want it at the end as well. And I'm going to try and put it at the start. However, that doesn't work. So the only way I've found to get around this is to actually click on the main part of the video. I don't do select call because it would then select everything. So just copy that section. And then I go back between the two videos that I've now put in place. Just roughly here. And then I press paste. And that hasn't done what I expected it to do. So undo. And I wonder if I just shift slide the whole thing down. Did that work? That did work. Right, so obviously uh, using the copy and paste thing there, it's only taking part of it and pasted it in in mid para, whereas by sliding the middle section into place, it's let me do that. Now, here you'll then also see, as I said to you earlier about the sound wave, there's a bit of a sound wave here, but it then stops, and I'm just now going to let you hear that. So as you see, there's a bit of a gap, but that's going to be useful in this end. Now, as you see there, it's just going straight into it. Now, my preference is that I like to go in between these two bits here, and I then like to add an animation. So I've now got a bit of a space. So if I replay that, So what I can do here is actually move the audio to the end, the line to the end of the audio, and then do the edit, and I say that's my end point. So hopefully it's worked. And it's as simple as that. Now, one of the other things to then do at this point is then go to the other end. And this is rough, and I quite like to hear what they're saying. So we're there. And we've got the same issue at the end. So I'm going to just do animation. And hopefully it's worked. Uh, I don't know where it's going, but it didn't go where I thought it was going to go. So let's try again. Right, so it's done at that time. Okay, so that's a bit smoother at the end, and it just mixes the two bits together. And again, you'll see there the sound wave. Let it fade for a second, and we'll then see that is the end point. So again, back to edit, set end point. So that now means we have a video that is roughly um, 
13 minutes and 40 seconds long. OK, now the next thing I like to do is put people's names up. So it's Lorraine and Graham. Uh, so now what I would do is put a caption in. So you go back here and you add caption and that brings up this bar. Now, normally I there's a bit of a black space down here, so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get around this today. But um, so we're going to put up. Lorraine and Graham from Shire. Voluntary action. Now, to maybe make it a bit more less um, involved, I will shift that right along. And as you see, it is then bringing it down a wee bit. That's voluntary action. I'm tempted to make that Edva. In fact, I think I will make it Edva because Liz says what it is earlier. So I'll shift that down. Now normally I keep this white because it's a black background, but uh, because of the shirt uh, and the picture, what I think I'm going to do is uh, maybe choose black this time. Kind of works. Unfortunately, I can't have like two captions. I can only have the one caption here. So uh, we'll stick with that just now. I then can also say how long I want the caption to be. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is make this, uh, instead of seven seconds, I'll make it 30. And as you see here, you get an indication of how far that along that's going to be. Um, now at the end, Liz usually gets them to see how they can get in touch. So that was five seven eight double six eight oh. So again, another caption. Oh one four one five seven eight double six eight oh. Um, so I do that, and I wonder if I can get that to go along. That's about the best I'm going to get. So I, it's not going to work. So if I take it to there, so it's not covering covering Lorraine's face. What I can then do is again make that black. shift it up to Graham again in this sense as well. There we go. We'll stick it above his head. Um, so info at edva.org is their email. Here's the caption. Now, with some people, uh, if you see them sort of pausing at this point and wondering, oh hell, what is my email? I have a habit of uh, just Googling and uh, just to make it sure, make sure I've got the right details. Um, so 01415786680 and info at edva.org. Um, I'm wondering if this will work actually. And I'll change that back to white. OK. 
kind of works. What I could maybe do is take the size of it down slightly. And just make sure it kind of works, doesn't it? We're getting there. Right, that. In fact, if I take that out, that does work like that. So there, we've got it. We've got the phone number. We've got the email address. Um, uh, without putting it all over their faces and whatnot, which is again an improvement. So again, how long do I want to keep this up for? Probably um, towards the end of the video. So I can go there instead of seven. Again, I'll put in there to test it. And uh, we can maybe get away with 45. And that actually does work. It takes it right up to the end. So if I now play that just to check it. So that has worked. So that's the completed video. So now all that we do is we uh, save the movie and we're going to save it for YouTube purposes. So it's save movie and YouTube. Basically, that is um, the recommendation that they have for the quality of it. So we then go to find the folder play files, Zoom meetings. And I like to call this edited and branded. And in this case, Edva interview. And, and we will save that. And again, this will take a few minutes to do its thing. So as you see, the movie version of it, uh, the project version of it is nearly complete. That's a complete. And I now need to save um, it as a um, MP4. So YouTube and, or oh, actually, did I save it already? Just Let's save as an MP4. What annoys me here is you quite often have to go back in to change the things here. Oh, yeah, but it has saved it as an MP4. That's good. So uh, cancel. And that is it basically ready. So I'll come back to you with another video about how we now do the upload.